Hello, this is Matt from Matt Teeny Apps, and welcome to part 11 in our series covering all of the basics of Swift Free. In this video, we will start to take a look at classes. Now, classes is quite a big topic, so we will take a look at classes across two videos. In this video, we will take a look at what a class is, why we would use a class and setting up a basic class, and in the next video, we will build upon this when we look at inheritance. So let's jump straight into Xcode. So let's jump into Xcode and we want to get started with a playground. We will call this classes and save it somewhere nice and safe. We will get rid of this string just here so that we now have a nice blank playground. So to wrap up this series, we will take a look at classes and we will be taking a look at classes across two videos. In this video, we will take a look at the basics of classes and setting up a simple class. And then we can look at the more advanced stuff in the next video. But obviously it's important for you guys to understand the basics of classes before we can move on to focus on the more advanced parts of classes. So what is a class and why would we use one? Well, a class is another way that we can set up a custom type in our apps or in our games. So far, we looked at two different ways of doing this. We looked at enums and we looked at structures. So this is a third way of creating our own custom type. As a quick recap, we use an enum when we have a set list of options and we use a structure for storing data together. So with classes, we create custom types that represent an object or a thing or an item. So for example, if we used a structure to store the position that a person is on a map, we would use a class for the person. So we would set up a custom type. We would include all of our properties and all of our methods, and then we can simply make this person. And in many ways, a basic class looks and feels very similar to a structure and a lot of setting up a class will look very familiar from the video where we looked at structures. And a lot of building a simple class you already know from the structs video, but there are a few very important differences. So let's set up a simple class. We will use the example we just said where we will make a person. So we use the keyword class and we name our brand new class person, open curly bracket and drop some lines. As always, it should put in that you're closing curly bracket for you. So this is our brand new type, our brand new object, which is a person. And this person needs some properties, some values that make up the person. And this is the exact same as how we set up properties in structures like we looked at in the last video. So what does the person need to be a person? Well, they need a name, which would be a string. We'll do a let because I know sometimes your name changes, but for the sake of this, we will do a let. I need an age and we will also do a country. So just where they're from as a string. Okay, we could do that with an enum, but we'll keep this nice and simple today with a string. As a quick recap, we do not set values for these here as we set the values for a person when we are creating that person. So that instance of the person, However, we could set a value here as well. So for example, we could say var age equals 18. And if we did that, every variable or constant that is of type person would have a property of age, which is set by default to 18. And it will stay at 18 until you change it for that person. But unless you want these default values, do not set values here as we will set the values when we make the person. So this should look really familiar from the video about structs. We have set up a new type called a person and we have given them properties. And as a quick recap, properties are something that every single instance, so a variable or a constant that is a person must have. So if something is a person, it must have a name, must have an age, and it must have a country. You can add to this, but we will try and keep this nice and simple today with three properties. So if this was a structure, that would be it done. And that is because structures have a ready-made initializer. Classes, however, do not have a built-in initializer, so we have to set up our own initializer. So what is an initializer and why would we use one? Well, an initializer is a special kind of method that we run whenever we try to create a person. With the initializer, we pass in any values that we need to make a person and we can then create the person. 
So to set up an initializer, we will use the keyword init. So within the class of person, we will use the keyword init. Open up a bracket and we will pass in some parameters just like with a normal function. So what do we have to pass into our initializer? Well, the golden rule of any initializer is that by the end of the initializer, everything must have a value. So everything the person needs must have a value. They must have a name, they must have an age, and they must have a country. If in a class you gave a property a default value, like with the age equals 18 example from a few moments ago, then you would not have to worry about that property in the initializer because it would already have a value. The initializer is for any properties that do not have values. So when we make a person, we need a name, an age, and a country for the person that we're making. So the parameters would be name of type string, age of type int and country of type string. Then all we have to do is take these values and set them to the properties of the person that we're setting up. So we want to take the person's name and set that to the name that we're passing in, take the person's age and set that to the age that we're passing in and take the country and set that to the country we're passing in. Let's try and do that. All we would do is say name this guy from here equals name this one from here right same with age and same with country we're just taking the properties of the person and setting that to the values that we're passing in now this will give us some errors and why is that well this even just to read is very confusing name equals name age equals age and country equals country it seems a little bit odd and it's actually confusing our code just a little bit because what the code thinks we're doing is taking this name from here and setting that to itself. Same with age and same with country, which obviously isn't what we want to do. We want to set these values to the property of the person. So there's two ways of doing this. What we could do is change the name of the parameter that we're passing in. So we could say, for example, full name. We could say name equals full name. Now it's a lot clearer to read and the code knows exactly what we want. No errors on this line. However, I want to keep these as the exact same as the property names of the person. Because if we start getting into calling it name in one place and then full name in a different place and say an age in one place and years old in another place, it's going to get really confusing. So we don't want to do that. We want to keep these as the same name. Excuse the pun. So what we will do instead, we will keep these the same, but we will say self.name equals name. So this tells our code very clearly, set the name of the person to the name that we're passing in. Set the age of the person that we're making to the age that we're passing in and set the country of the person that we're making to the country that we're passing in. So now we have our initializer, a method that will run when we make a person. So when we try and make a person, we will ask for a name that must be a string. We will ask for an age that must be an int. And we will ask for a country that must be a string. We then taking those values and set that to the name, the age, and the country of the person that we're currently making. And for a very basic class, that is it. So how do we use this initializer and how do we make a person? What we can do outside of the class, we can say var and we will call this person1 of type person, the name of our class. This will equal a person, open bracket, and this here is our initializer. It will ask us for a name, it will ask us for an age, and it will ask us for a country. So we could pass values in. We have Sarah, who is 19, from USA. So this now has created a person who has the name Sarah, has the age 19, and she's from America. So this here is our initializer. And to quickly prove that, if up here we changed the order, so if we change country and age around, and I'm also for the sake of this gonna change name to full name. So our initializer is slightly different. Now, when we make a person, as you can see, it is asking us for a full name, a country before age, because we flipped our order, and then our age. So whatever we have here, we will have here. However, I don't want that. So we will jump back to the way we had it, 
and that was just to prove a quick point. A class can actually have multiple initializers, so you can have more than one initializer method, and if you do this, when you go to make a person, it will give you multiple options of creating that person. One option for each initializer that you have. Okay, so we now have set up a person. We have Sarah, and we can use this to make a couple of people. So we're using our class and our initializer to build up a person. So what we could do, we could now use these peoples. We can get values. So person1.name, that's Sarah. Person1.age, 19. And person2.age, which is J, which is 30. So we have created these people and we have given them values and we can use that. We can also modify these values to take person2, which is J, and add one to his age. So he's now 31. However, we can only do that because this is a var. Even though the overall person is a variable, if their property is a constant, we can't change it. So if we tried with person one's name, if we changed it to Julie, we can't do it because they're constant, okay? So we now have two people. What we can also do with classes, just like with structures, is have methods to run on a person. So within person, we can set up a function, which is a method because we call it on an object, which we will call celebrate birthday. And in here, when we run this, we will add one to the age and we will print happy birthday and then the person's name. So this is just a method that we explored in structures. So this should just be recap. And then what we can do, we can take person one, for example, and on person one, run celebrate birthday, which as you can see, we're now printing happy birthday, Sarah. And if we look at person's one age, she has now turned 20. Okay, so we're running methods on the person. And again, a quick bit of recap, self is whatever person we are running this on. So if we run it on person one, self means person one. If we run it on person two, self means person two. And the name that we print Again, is the name of the person we are running this on, whether that's person one or person two. Note how we don't actually have to say self.name, as in a method like this, the code will fully understand that the name that we mean is the name of the person, because there is nothing else it could use called name in this situation. In our initializer, when we had a parameter also called name, then we did have to use self. But in celebrate birthday, there is nothing else we could use called name, so it assumes we mean self.name. In a place like this, using self or not using self comes down to preference. I personally prefer using self, but in situations where you haven't got to do it, it's up to you, okay? So that is how we set up a basic class. So like I said, we use classes to represent objects, things, items. And a very good reason why we use classes for this, and that is because of inheritance which we'll explore in the next video. However, I now want to take this chance to have a quick look at something. And that is one of the big ways that classes and structs are different. Okay, so what I've done, I have jumped into a brand new playground to keep what we just made for our class separate because we will be coming back to that in the next video. So what I've done, brand new playground, and here I have the base of our person class. So we just have our properties and our initializer and the base of our point on map struct, just like the one from the previous video. In the next video, when we take a look at more advanced classes, you will see there is quite a lot of difference between classes and structures. On this base level, classes and structures look very similar. Apart from the initializer we have to make ourselves for classes, they do look very similar. However, on the more base level, there is quite a big difference between the two. And that comes down to how things are stored. Basically, a variable or a constant that has a type which is a structure stores data in one way, and a variable or a constant that has a type which is a class stores its data in a different way. And that is because classes are what are called reference type and structures are value types. And in Swift, every type is either a reference type or a value type. So what does this mean? Let's have a look at our structs. Let's have a look at point on map. Let's set up point one. This will be a point on map. So we're using our struct to hold the values for our coordinates 12, 23. So point one has an X of 12 and a Y of 23. So that's point one. If we now set up point two, 
again of type point on map and set this to the values of point one. What we're doing is taking whatever point one is and setting that to point two. So for example, if we looked at point two dot X, it would be 12 because that's point one's X. And if we looked at point two's Y, it will be 23. Point two has the exact same values as point one. Because structs are value types, what we're doing is when we say take point two and set that to the values of point one, we are making a copy of the values of point one and setting this to a brand new separate variable called point two. These are separate and they hold separate versions of the same values. So what does that mean? Well, if we take point two and we change the value of a property, so now point two dot x is going to be free, this does not change point one in any way. Point one dot x is still 12. Same the other way around. If we change point one's y to 17, this does not change point two's y that still stays at 23. So these are separate. And if we change one of them, the other one is not affected in any way. Point one and point two store their own individual set of values. And that is how value types work. Now, on the other hand, classes are a little bit different. Okay, so let's make some room. Let's do the same sort of thing that we did with this, but with a class. So let's have person one. This is a different playground, so we can use the name person one again. Of type person will be a person, and we will use Sarah again. If we set up person two of type person and set this to be person one. So now we said person two will be a person which has the same values as person one. So to make sure that's all working, person two dot name is gonna be Sarah person 2.age is going to be 19 and person 2.country is going to be America. Person 2 holds all the same values as person 1. Now this is where things get a little bit different. So let's take person 2 and let's take their age and let's change it to 45. So person 2.age is now 45. However, this is the big however. Person 1.age, you might think we still be 19. However, person 1's age has also changed to 45. And that is because classes are reference types. And how this works is when we store a class, we're storing this information in memory and all person one is holding is a reference to where that data is in memory. And when we set up person two to be the same as person one, all we're doing is setting the reference of where to go look for the data. So rather than setting values to person one or person two, we are storing those values and telling person one to look in a certain place for those values. By setting person two to be the same as person one, we are simply saying person two also look in that same place for these values. And because they're both looking at the same place in memory, if we change one of them, we change both of them. So person two isn't a copy of person one. Person two effectively is person one, just another use of the same person. So that is what a reference type is. So with structs, they're value types, so we can make a direct copy of them and change them independently. But classes are reference types. If so if we try and make a copy of them and we change the values of one of them, we change the values of both of them. Okay, so that was our first look at classes. We will build upon this in the next video when we take a look at inheritance. But for this video, that is all. As always, thank you for watching. Leave any questions down in the comments. Hit like, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.